Bless him, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Well, good morning to each of you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. It's good to be here. It's been a beautiful Lord's Day morning. It's been a encouragement to be gathered here with each of you. It's, it's really good to see everybody. It's good to have Jonathan back. I can't wait to see this little new one, and hopefully we can soon. And uh, just so thankful that we're on this side of it. But God bless you each for being here. It's really good to see each of you and invite our visitors to, to worship with us. <clears throat> This year to us, to me, has been a year of weddings. As I think about this past um, 11 months, I guess, uh, we was figuring it up this morning. We was invited to close, I believe we was invited to 12 weddings this year, and we attended seven weddings this year. I attended, yeah, we each attended, I would admit, my wife and I didn't get to go to one of the weddings together, and she didn't get to go to one of the weddings that I went to, but together, or as a family, we attended seven weddings this year. So as I think about being at these weddings and, and this, this striking young man and this beautiful young lady walking out down the aisle out into life, a home is established. When there is a wedding, a home is established. A home that was joined by God and for His glory. All the weddings that I attended were those of born-again people, of believers. So a godly home was started at this wedding service. This morning, from this front bench back, every one of you share the same fact, and that is that you are a part of a home. You belong to a home. You either have or had a father, and you either have or had a mother. You are a part of a home. No matter your age, no matter your stage, you are a part of a home. And I want to think about godly homes a little bit this morning and each part of that home. Father, mother, son, and daughter. Not every home has a daughter and not every every home has a son but generally speaking there's one or the other and sometimes both <clears throat> jeremiah 35 let's go to that scripture to start with <clears throat> jeremiah 35 This scripture is read in Father's Day messages some, probably, but we're going to read it here a couple of verses. Jeremiah 35, 18 and 19, it says, And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandments of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he hath commanded you, thus saith the Lord of Host, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to sta stand before me forever. <clears throat> so we have a man here that is on, that is a, a part of the family of God, a man that is doing what God has asked fathers to do and has secured a generation, if you would look at the story, has secured multiple generations of faithful children during, his, during the time he lived at. And if you was to study that time that he lived in, it was a time of spiritual and moral decay. He was living in a time of wickedness, in a time of falling away. And as you think about the world that we know today, there is a falling away. There is a time of moral and spiritual decline in some places. So how can you and I, dads, this morning, how can we be fathers like Jonadab? Young men that are not married. Conrad is the only one here that's fixing to be married that I know of. How can you be that Father, that husband, like Jonadab. 
and raise up children of choice that are going to make the right choices to follow God. <clears throat> and we don't have time to, to talk all morning about fathers, but I want to go back to uh, some verses here. Um, let's see here. Let's go to... <clears throat> Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. It has a, a verse here. And I want to... We're going to talk about the first part a little bit, but mainly the last part. As we think about being that young man or being that young father, or being that father in any situation. Ephesians 6, 4 says, And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So we're called here to not have an environment where our children are, are pushed to become angry. And an environment where they are not given the opportunity to succeed, I guess, in a, in a calm environment. But the, the verses I want to look here, the words I want to look here, is this nurture and admonition of the Lord. How do you and I, how can we as fathers bring up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? How does that happen? Or does it, is it chance that our children are going to make the right decisions, are going to follow God, are going to have Jesus as their captain? <clears throat> bring them up means to cherish or train. It, bring, it means to Give them the necessities, almost like food. Give them what they need to survive and to thrive in, in, in their home. Nourish them in the discipline and instruction of the Lord with all tenderness and mildness, somebody has stated. Think about that as the environment of your home, fathers. <clears throat> Nurture means to tutor or to spend some quality time in training, in instruction, leading by example. Be who you want your children to be. Titus 2 and verse 2 says that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. You know, I see a picture of a grandpa or a grandma in this case, of, of someone that's solid, someone that's stable, someone that knows what they believe, a person of conviction. <clears throat> Titus 2 and verse 6, it brings it back to some of us younger people. It says, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of thee. <clears throat> Older fathers exhorting younger fathers, or younger men who may one day be a father, sober or grave. It's not, it's not the teaching that we walk around in a, in a state of of, of a despair or a look on our face that's, that's harsh or hard, but it's the idea of stability and of conviction and of being a man that is sound in the way we live and the way we walk. <clears throat> Sober has the idea of being vigilant or being watchful, of staying awake. You know, I was sitting across the table from a young man last Saturday after a wedding and we was talking about our school system. And we was talking about the blessing of our school system and how he was a teacher. He's been a teacher for a number of years. Now he's married. He's fixing to be a daddy himself. And he was talking about the environment, the school. And he said they just had some a, a, a speaker come through. I believe it was from CLE maybe. I'm not sure. And, and they had a, a talk on the benefits of our school. And I think each one of us would jump up in our seats this morning and thank the Lord for our schools, right? We're thankful for our schools. <clears throat> but we was talking about how much better it is <clears throat> that our children can go to a Christian day school. 
And he looked at me dead in the eye and he says, but is it? Is our schools better than the public schools? And I was somewhat taken back. You know, here we have a, a teacher that's a Mennonite. You know, we share the same denomination name. And he's asking, but the, the point he was trying to make, and the point that I'm trying to make this morning is, he said, these children in my school, from my church, they come to school with these phones, and he says, they are doing and saying and acting some of the same way that the world is. He said, is it better? Well, I'm not here to judge, and I'm not here to talk about that this morning. But fathers, do you know what your children are looking at, scrolling, being exposed to, and then going to your Christian school and sitting under Christian teaching? Be watchful. Be aware. Stay awake. <clears throat> the thing of being grave is being well-respected and honest. You know, children pick up so quickly whether or not we're honest, whether or not we're people of integrity. Be temperate. Be self-controlled. It comes into the anger thing there. Don't let, don't let the emotional part of you get out of hand. Be, be self-controlled. Be sound in faith. Or have a healthy belief system. Have a conviction to yourself. Know what you believe. Be true in what you believe. Be sound. Be whole. <clears throat> have a healthy love. Be sound in charity. A love for God first. A love for our families, a love for each other as men. So important to lead out and be sound in charity. Be sound in patience. Be cheerful. Be enduring. Endure the things of life that are not easy. <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 6 says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. You know this thing of, of being a man, being a young man, being a father, then a grandfather. You know, there's a, there's a, lot, there's a, a continuation. We have some gray hair in here this morning. We're called to be faithful even as we get older. <clears throat> the last part of the verse here of, of uh, Proverbs 17 says, It is an honor to children to have wise and godly parents. So be that. Be that. The glory of the children are their fathers. <clears throat> to the mother here this morning, let's go to 1 Samuel 1. <clears throat> I had a wonderful mother for 39 years of my life. A, a person that I looked up to in, in, in so many, many ways. And this morning, if you have a mother that's still alive and that is a Christian, thank her for what she's done for you. Thank her for being faithful. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 1, 26. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here and praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord give me my petition, petition which I ask of him. Therefore also have I lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. There's a mother here, a mother that wants God to be involved in her son's life. She is a woman, she says, I am the woman that prayed for you. I am the woman that give you, that lent him to you. Mothers here this morning, pray for your children. Pray for your husband. Pray for the people in your home that gather around your table. <clears throat> you know, God had answered her prayer. And she said, as long as I, my soul liveth, I am that person that stood here and that prayed. <clears throat> Be that mother that allows your children to go and to leave. When Hannah brought Samuel to the temple, she left him there to help Eli, to be involved in the work of the Lord. You know, Samuel was still her son, but she said, here, you can have him because he was a gift from you. You know, there's going to be times, mothers here this morning, where you're going to have to let your children leave. Allow your children 
to be a part of another person's life, whether it's through marriage or whether it's through service, whether it's through, through uh, school teaching. Lori here this morning left her mother and came here to teach for us. Her mother had to be okay with that. You're going to have to be okay with allowing your children to leave to go help or do whatever they need to do. Another thing that this young man and I talked about when it comes to school teachers was the lack of teachers in our system, in our schools, in our churches. There is always a need for teachers. Mothers, provide a culture in your home where your children can leave and go teach or go do whatever. Mothers, you're going to have to send your child to Sunday school for the first time. You're going to have to send your children to school for the first time. You're going to have to let them go to youth for the first time. Their first job, their wedding day. Yes, they're always going to be your child, but you have to allow them to be used of God. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Titus here. <clears throat> Titus 2, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love <clears throat> their children. Mom, you have a opportunity to love big. You have the privilege to love in a unimaginable way. A mother's love is a love like no other. You are called to teach your daughter to love. Be an example. This teaching program isn't something that you do for 30 minutes one morning when they're 16. It is a lifelong legacy that you leave for them. Tell those around you often how much you love them. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Show them how much you love them. <clears throat> be the mother, be the young lady that loves. <clears throat> to the men here, to the young men. Psalm 144, we have a word picture here. It's a short verse, but I want to read this word picture here. Psalm 144 and verse 12. <clears throat> that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. <clears throat> Lamentations 4.2 says, The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? <clears throat> what the young men are here this morning, the older men will be. Be that young person that is strong and well-rooted as a young tree or a young plant. <clears throat> If they don't grow, if we don't give them an environment or an opportunity to grow when they're young, when will they grow? We have the idea here from this verse as a plant that's grown up of a strong, of healthy, of vigorous. <clears throat> we don't have to be the fastest on the foot race. We don't have to be the best spiker on the volleyball team. We don't even have to know how to play sports to be a man that is strong and that is well-rooted. <clears throat> a writer once says, if a man is to grow, he must grow like a tree. There must be nothing between him and heaven. Think about that statement or that, that quote a little bit. What is at the top of the ladder for you guys this morning? Is it God? Is it Jesus? Or is it something else? Let nothing be between you and heaven. <clears throat> this morning, if you were born in a Chinese home as a son, what they tell me is there's a bow and an arrow that are hung over the gate because it is a picture of the Scripture. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. My son, 
Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Hear thou my son and be wise and guide thine heart in the way. The Bible talks a lot about sons, about men, about boys, about fathers. <clears throat> Proverbs 2, let's turn to that quickly. Proverbs 2. My son, be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Proverbs 2, 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. My son, if you're willing to do this, this is how it's going to play out for you in life. <clears throat> be that strong young man. Be that strong young father. Be that person that is a tree that is growing towards God. Back to Psalm 144. To the ladies here this morning, the young ladies, Psalm 144, verse 12, that our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of a palace. Beauty of mind and manners, beauty of soul and temper, beauty of character. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. God didn't create you to be a failure, to be someone that doesn't make it. He created you to be as a cornerstone, polished after the similitude of a palace. And we could spend a lot of time thinking about how all that would look in character. <clears throat> Ruth 4 verse 11 says, And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that has come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. We have a picture here of a young lady that was worthy in Ephrata and famous in Bethlehem because she was a cornerstone. And she was, had a good name. She was of a good character. She was notable. She was strong. A picture of beauty of mind and character. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. <clears throat> the Bible says for children to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. <clears throat> And it ends up, we know well the verse, it ends up that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Be as cornerstones, young ladies, this morning. Be as polished like a palace. Beautiful inside and out. People of character. <clears throat> to every home that is here this morning, whether married or unmarried, whether a father or a mother, whether a grandfather or a grandmother, Maybe you don't have parents here this morning. I don't know everyone that's here. But everyone here come from a home. Everyone here has the opportunity to be a part of a home. What are we going to do with that opportunity? How are we going to bring honor and glory to God with what we can do in the home that we're in? Maybe you're adopted into a home. Whatever the case may be, be that person that builds your home. Be that person that allows your home to be a godly home. <clears throat> God give us Christian homes. Homes where the Bible is loved and taught. Home where the master's will is sought. Homes crowned with beauty your love has wrought. Homes where the father is true and strong. Homes that are free from the blight of wrong. Homes that are joyous with love and song. Home where the mother in caring quest strives to show others 
your way is best. Homes where the Lord is an honored guest. Homes where the children are led to know Christ in His beauty, who loves them so. Homes where the altar fires burn and glow. God, give us Christian homes. As we think about where we're at right now this morning, the home that we're a part of, the home that we're going to be a part of, the home that we hope to be a part of, let's be a people. Let's be a father, a mother, a son, or a daughter that is strong and as a tree and as a plant that reaches out to God. Shall we stand together for prayer? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day. We thank you for the privilege of gathering together with our church family and friends and loved ones and worshiping you today. Lord, we thank you for each part of this service that we've been privileged to be here, the singing, the devotional, the Sunday school lesson. Lord, you blessed us so much. Lord, we pray just now for each mother and each father that is in this building this morning. Lord, may you touch and bless them with wisdom from on high. Bless them with conviction. Bless them with a love and a compassion for their families and for those that they're called to meet with and to be there for. Lord, we pray for each son and each daughter that's gathered in this room this morning. Lord, you know the hearts and lives of each one. Lord, help them to grow up to be men and women that love and serve you. Men and women that find themselves in godly homes where they join hands and hearts with others and move on into your kingdom to build your church, to be a part of what you have called us all to be a part of. Lord, we pray for the little ones gathered here this morning. Lord, you know their needs. Bless them with health according to your will. Bless them as they grow. Be with them as they listen and learn. May they also grow up if the world tarries to love and serve you. We pray a blessing on those this morning who've lost loved ones, who don't have a mother or a father, who have lost their wife. May you, may you be with them. May you help them. May you touch them. May you heal them. Bless this day, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat>